So what's Interplay Central? So at NAB, which is a, a show that we have in uh, Las Vegas every year, uh, we announced this product solution called Interplay Central. Now Interplay Central um, is um, basically a new client architecture that we're building. As you saw a moment ago, we have a number of different software applications within the Interplay product family. And if you can also imagine in the MAM technology that we have, some other software applications, we have lots of different software applications from simple browsing, logging, shot listing, editing, searching, but they're all discrete, different components. What we need to do is to build a framework for these clients that you only have to launch one application and you populate that application with the tools that you need to do your job. And that's what the Interplay Central concept is. It's basically building out a framework that we can then have these plugins, in effect, which could be you know, a, a newsroom plugin, it could be a browser player plugin, it could be a, um, an editor plugin, it could be an audio plugin, it could be all kinds of things. So and it could even be third parties. The, the, um, and this is built around a HTML5 architecture and it's designed to have a third party software development kit so you can host applications with inside that same window so non-avid applications could be hosted. So as, as I get into the discussion around Interplay Central, I kind of want to position a couple of things very carefully. Interplay production um, is uh, designed to work with our real-time uh, shared storage system, so our Unity Media Network product or, or our ISIS product family. Whereas on the MAM side of things, um, the database there, the storage database for this, actually could be any vendor's storage. So if you're working with nearline storage or archiving systems, um, the MAM is ideally suited to actually manage any kind of storage system that you want to have within your facility. We're going to continue developing Interplay production and certainly continue developing our MAM solution. Obviously, we want to try and get very tight integration to these things so that if you have both within your organization, the users can search across anything, anywhere. They can either search into the Interplay production system or search into the uh, the MAM system, which could take you into the archive. So this layer of uh, technology that sits across the top, this is a, what we call a consolidated client architecture, where we're taking all these different software applications that are on different code bases. We're going to build out a new framework for a user interface and then have these plugins enabled. So this is what Interplay Central is. Um, our first offering, or our first showing of the product to NAB is focused towards news production. And that was a, a deliberate marketing uh, decision. Uh, we have some very, very big news production systems around the world. Um, and we want to sort of migrate our existing Interplay customers onto Interplay Central. And the nice thing is, this is not a forklift upgrade. It, it, it's, um, a, you know, the two can coexist. You can have Interplay Central and the existing applications and then transition across to Interplay Central when you're ready. Um, we're also going to be building out a series of unified services. And, and just as an example of that, Interplay Production today has a transcoding service, or it has an archiving service. The, the MAM solution also has similar services. It makes no sense to have two separate sets of services. So we're going to obviously make sure we have one unified set of uh, network services. So we'll just have a common, common uh, transcoding service, a common delivery service, a common acquisition service. And that's all work in progress at the moment. Uh, as we top down, this is the most important thing at the moment. Developing out the client framework for Interplay Central is actually the biggest piece of work that we've been undertaking for the last 18 months. Um, and what we launched at NAB is, is the beginning of many things that you're going to see going forward. And then under the lid, so to speak, is we want to make sure that it's very tight integration between the production management system and the, and the MAM system. So uh, metadata uh, can flow between the two systems transparently. Um, as can media files. So any user uh, above these two systems could search just in the production system or into the MAM system or potentially into the archive or wherever it might be. So you just have one view. It's like a portal. It's like a window into your media assets in, in, your, uh, in your business. So a new infrastructure uh, for the clients. It's web-based. So this application is designed you know, to run on the internet. Um, it is a thin client application. Uh, you don't have to install any software on your Mac or your laptop, your PC, whatever it might be. Um, in fact, what actually happens is you log into the system and we stream the application to the user. And then you just go off and start working. So no software to install. 
Um, it is a window into your organization's content. And um, when I look at all the individual software applications across our whole product family today, we've at least nine individual you know, software applications across Interplay production, across our newsroom system, across the MAM. And what we need to move towards is this common client framework. And then you can host these applications or the tools that these applications represent within that, uh, within that, way, uh, that framework. We also have an application for um, mobile use for Blackberries. Uh, today that was something we announced at NAB. We are working on, um, obviously the, the logical thing now would be iPhones, iPads, and Android. So that's again work in progress. Um, and you see those things uh, coming out in future releases. So this is quite a substantial piece of work in terms of a development cycle, um, but this is really the future. And when we talk about running applications over the internet, doing real-time editing, what we're actually doing is all the high-resolution media comes into a centralized uh, storage system within your facility, and then we effectively stream a low-resolution proxy to the end user or to the person using Interplay Central in, in a remote location. Uh, you may not be able to see that, this in very detail, but I mean, basically, all, all these elements in this window are all plugins, and they could be in any location, any position, any size uh, that you like. So you can basically build a user interface to suit individual users, or what we're kind of calling a role-based application. So if you have a, a director or a producer, or maybe a journalist or something like that, you can set the user interface up for that specific set of tools and for the way that person might, may, uh, may work. So the initial release of this, definitely targeted towards news production, but you will definitely see this move towards much more post-orientated solutions as well. Um, we are working on um, some additions to the product family. It's absolutely on our roadmap. It's just a question of time as to when these things will start to be seen. Um, and, um, but I think you can see the beginning now of something completely new. The technology that underpins this was um, an acquisition of a company called Maximum Throughput about two years ago or so. And um, we did a conceptual demo of uh, web-based editing. Mm, actually, not this NAB, but last year back in 2010. And that was really just at that time a concept solution. What we're now showing here is that we're deploying the technology but we're building out a new framework architecture to support different client types over the next few releases. So those of you who may have seen the, um, the um, web-based editing demo uh, sort of 18 months ago, a year ago, um, you know, this is really the beginning. Based on that technology, you'll start to see more of that going forwards. Very lightweight application. You don't really need an expensive graphics card. You don't need a, an expensive laptop or a Mac. Uh, very lightweight client. Um, and again, you don't have to install any software. So the great thing about this is if you, if, if you potentially have hundreds of users in your, uh, in your company that are all working with Interplay Central, they will always be running on the very latest version of software because it's installed once in the centralized system and just streamed to everybody when you need it. So you don't have to go around doing dongle updaters, you don't have to do software installs, a lot of those problems are taken away. Uh, so focused around customizable to the workflow, making sure we give you flexibility in um, configuring the user interface around your role, um, tight focus, focus on usability, single application, and effectively accessible anywhere. Although this is a, you know, a web-based application, you can use it within your, you know, within your own intranet, so uh, uh, very versatile. And finally, I just want to kind of touch on this idea of um, the services-orientated architecture because I think this is, these are the building blocks that, as we talk about um, openness, file-based workflows, and some of the solutions that we've touched on here, the product architecture that underpins this has to be very highly adaptable and versatile. But it also has to be very open as well. We can't afford to lock this in to be an Avid-only solution. Um, so the concept of, of a services oriented architecture is dead simple. Um, you basically have a set of services. Each of those has a specific job, ingest, editing, transcode, playout. Um, these services, if they're designed correctly, are interchangeable. If you wanted a transcode service, you could go out and choose, of the 10 vendors out there doing uh, encoding and transcoding solution, you could choose the one that you prefer. So you're not tied to a particular single vendor. Um, this is a bit more 
a bit more uh, of a complex story. But basically, what this is showing here is the Interplay MAM uh, services architecture. And in fact, Interplay production is very similar to this. It's built around this concept of uh, individual services. And you choose the services that you want for your business. You don't have to have all of them. You may only want one. You may want two. You may want three. But they're all integrated through standard open interfaces uh, up to your user interface level. So it's a very versatile and very flexible way of deploying a system. And it can be actually very tightly tuned um, and uh, developed around your specific needs. So you're going to hear more of the services-oriented architecture from many other vendors. We're all kind of doing the same thing. We all recognize that openness, flexibility, choice, these are the mantras for the future. We cannot afford to be a closed solution. Um, I know there's a lot of text here. Please don't feel you have to read this. The important thing is this thing at the top, this thing called the Framework for Interoperable Media Services. This is actually something that kind of suddenly really has just happened just before NAB. Uh, a number of companies got together and decided to show proof of concept in terms of integration of their different uh, products, but using this concept of a services-orientated architecture. Um, it is designed to be vendor neutral. You know, it's just a framework for implementing these media workflows and media services. Um, I, I don't have a diagram for this, but at NAB, these companies, Avid, Sony, IBM, uh, Synergy, Radiant Grid, and Q, uh, CubeTech, just got together and built out a workflow from acquisition all the way through to dropping that um, media file and the clips into a media composer. So from capture, transcoding, audio process, and finally delivery on a media composer. And this was this spun out, you know, pretty much very quickly. This hasn't been something that's been, you know, under some thinking for years. This actually, with some like-minded vendors, came together. It's part of a combined. Um, uh, definition through the Advanced Media Workflow Association, which used to be called the Advanced Authoring Format, um, the EBU, and uh, like-minded companies that want to work together to develop out open solutions. So this is something you will see at IBC, actually. There's more work going on, uh, certainly, to show some developments in this area. And I think the important thing is, you know, openness is critical, you know, and it's not just about individual products like the editing systems. It's really the whole infrastructure. So that kind of wraps up my presentation for this afternoon. I just want to thank you very much for um, having the patience to listen to me this afternoon. There's, there's loads going on. Uh, we didn't touch on the editors. We didn't touch on any other product areas. <clears throat> there are obviously a few things from NAB that we wanted to talk about. <clears throat> but I can absolutely assure you, across the rest of the Avid product family, including Pro Audio, there's a lot going on, and there's much more to come. Thank you again. Thank you.